Evelyn Berezin was born to Russian immigrant parents who had no formal education. My older brother was seven years older than I was, and he got started buying astounding science stories. And he brought it home, and I started to read it. And I was fascinated by it. I thought it was marvelous. I used to steal them from him all the time. And, and, and it was really that, that that got me interested in this. I graduated from high school. I went into Hunter College. The problem was that Hunter was a girls' school, which meant they didn't care much about science. And I wanted to study physics then. I mean, I, from, from the time I read about it in Astounding Science. At 16, Berezin was hired to work at a research lab in Manhattan while attending three different colleges at night to study physics. So I took all my mathematics at Brooklyn Polytech and all my physics and chemistry and so on at NYU and all my literature art at, at Hunter. And I, I, and I was, at that time, since Brooklyn Poly was an all-boys school, the only woman in the school. <laughs> and the only woman who had ever been in Brooklyn Poly. In need of a better paying job, Berezin visited a physics headhunter recommended by her academic advisor. He said there are no jobs in physics now, he said, because the Korean War was on. And I said, you know, have, have you heard of any jobs in computers? I have no idea why I said that. I have no idea of where I knew about computers. He said to me, you know, I never heard of computers, but this morning I got a, I got a, a, a phone call from somebody in Brooklyn who's looking for people for a computer company. This morning, and that's what happened. I went over to the computer company. It was called Electronic Computer Corporation. I had never heard of it. The guy who was the head of engineering, Gene Leonard, his name was, Eugene Leonard, he gave me a test of, to design a, a, a network. Mm -hmm. I designed the network, I gave it back to him, and I was hired. And I was hired as a logic designer, which they didn't have. There, and later at Teleregister, Berezin designed machines for everything from managing magazine subscriptions to racetrack betting. In 1962, she took on a daunting project, creating a passenger reservation system for United Airlines. This was going to run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You could not have a failure. That system went onto all three machines so that the first machine would pick up a message and take it off immediately the first one that got it, and if it was busy, the message would go to the second machine, and if that was busy, the message would go to the third machine. And if the first machine was out, all it did was go to the second machine. So you never knew I had to fix things, or had to move things. I mean, it was automatically that this went one, two, three, and uh, he told me that it never went down in 11 years. They used it for 11 years and that it never went down. Berezin left Teleregister to accept an offer at the New York Stock Exchange but was devastated when the offer was suddenly withdrawn. The board said that they could not hire me. And I said, what, why? I mean, you know, at the time, I was probably one of the two people in the world who could design a machine for them. I mean, I, I, I was really just, you know, stunned. They said that you were a woman, you'd have to be on the stock market floor from time to time, and the language on the floor was not for a woman's ears. I just didn't know what to do. And I, I said, I went back to, to Digitronics. From the first day I went to work in the computer industry in 1951, to, by this time, towards the end of 1960s, I had the same job. And I'm looking up the next row up to vice president and I knew damn well that I would never get that job. That that job was for a man, and I would never have that job. And my experience at the, at the, um, at the stock exchange had taught me that. So I, I did come to the conclusion that the only way out was to start a company. Frustrated, Berezin started Redactron with three friends from Digitronics. 
And we started to say, well, what are we going to make? And so we actually didn't start sort of with an idea that somebody had and said, we want to take this public. We started with saying, we're going to start a company. What are we going to do? We thought about word processing. Now, I, I knew that IBM made a machine called the MTST, which was used, uh, had been used for some years uh, for, word, for what we now call word processing, but it was very limited. And that said to us, that's a hole there that we can use because if there's, if they're going to sell machines, they'll probably sell word processes if they ever come into the market. And if they sell word processes of any kind, that it would be, uh, they would sell them and they'd be expensive. So this is a safe place to go. Her design included an emerging technology, a single chip microprocessor. Manufacturing began in 1971 and within a year, Redactron shipped over 1,000 units, grew from 10 to 500 employees, and went public. Burroughs Corporation soon acquired Redactron. In 1976, Business Week published a list of the top 100 business women, and Barrism was the sole president of a tech company. Demand grew for her to serve on boards of technology companies and academic foundations. Evelyn Barrison blazed a trail for women through labs and fabs, unafraid of being the first or the only.